Let's try running a 12 volt feed to the carburetor. Greetings. I sound like Joey Boswell out of bread. Most of you on this channel will be old enough to remember bread, won't they? If you're outside of the UK, it was a UK sitcom from the 80s. Gotta get up, gotta get out. Getting off track here. What are we doing again? <laughs> oh yeah, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a new video. Another video or a new video? Right, I'm going to try and get my choke cable working because it seems I'll show you in a minute. And then we'll see if we can get the car idling right on that carburetor. Right, as you can see, the choke, she's pulling. But, like she's pulling. But she's not pushing. So it must be, it mustn't be snap because you can pull it back out like, oh shit, nothing's coming through. But, uh, she won't push back out, so it must be snagging on somewhere. Must be a king somewhere. So let's take the choke cable out completely and uh, have a look. Right, I've already pulled the choke through this grommet here that it it shares a home with what looks like the reverse light and this other one. I don't know what that one is. But uh, yeah, the choke cable goes through there and under the glove box. If we look under here, there's that grommet there and it looks like that red cable it's something to do with the radio. Choke cable runs across the back of the dash there and into a panel here on the dashboard. I think there's three screws to take it out there. I've already got all my binnacle off and everything like that because you know I was messing about with um, the indicators. I'm leaving it off for now just in case there's other things I have to mess with. But let's take this off. Maybe I, I don't know if you have to take the binnacle off before taking this off if it was already on but uh, Mine's already off. I'm going to whip this part of the dash off because I'll be able to see where the choke cable's rooted better. Gotta get up, gotta get out. Grab the wall by the throat and shout. Oh. Six screws holding this in, as I can see. At least I hope there's only six. Missed one. Seven screws holding that in. I can see where that's rooted enough. Oh. All right. I see. I see. I see. I see. I see. I see. I see, boy. Cover wasn't rolling there yet. The outer had come out of there, so when you were pushing, it was just pushing this entire thing there. So. I've put that in there and clamped it back on for now. Like I say, there is a new choke cable going on it, but just for now, I've got to work them on again. All right, put that back in there and use pliers to clamp it on a bit. Right, let's pop the choke cable back in, feed the wire behind the cable, back behind the dashboard and back through the grommet. And let's crack on with trying to sort out that air uh, idle on the carburetor. And get out of here, I am sweating on this genuine deer leather, deer skin. That's what it says in one of the trim options, this is deer skin. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but uh, deer skin sounds pretty cool. <laughs> right, let's feed that clutch cable back up. Before we go any further, a massive thank you to Al in America who sent us this box of goodies, including this crazy looking gear knob. Is that a sunflower in there? Let's crack us out, that'll have to get used on an air project in the future. I think he's into his JDM stuff, correct us if I'm wrong. And a box of goodies and all cool stuff that'll get used, including a load of cool stickers, which I'm going to cover my toolbox in, including uh, Edelbrock, Hurst. I don't know what all these are. I used to watch every car program known to man back in the day when I had the time. And uh, in fact, I've, I've been trying to get a hold of it, Edelbrock to see if I can get one to fit on top of me Weber. I have a very cool. Thank you very much. Is that a Super B? Thank you very much, I'll appreciate it very much. In fact, there we go. Here's me Edelbrock intake. <laughs> Air intake. Yeah, fill that. Yeah, I've been looking for them Edelbrock, you know, the chrome ones. I know that obviously they won't, probably don't do one that fits the Web R34 ICH, but try and get a hold of some that might work. I like the K&N ones and I like uh, the Ram Air ones as well, the flat ones where I, I kind of seem to find the one. 
to go on the 34 ICH. Hit us up if you know where they're going cheap, because it's pretty expensive. Right, process of elimination. Elimination. So I'm going to strip off the cob and the intake and check for any visible signs of damage or cracks or anything where air leaks can get in. So as you know, there's two half inch bolts that hold on the, the, the what's it called again? Carburetor. <laughs> the carburetor. I've already disconnected the accelerator cable and the choke bracket from it. And there's the carburetor off. Just checking the gasket. It's pretty new anyway. It's all in good. Checking the gasket. There is one stuck on the on the back of the accelerator bracket, but it's in good nick. Checking the insulator block here for any signs of cracks or damage. Three half inch bolts that hold in the, the intake manifold. And I'm going to check this for any visible signs of damage. Having a look down the ports there. Well, I took the this off, I realised it was covered in paint, so I'm giving it a good degreasing and a rub down for a scotch bright pad. Took the coil off and give it a good clean and there's no nicks and this isn't leaking, it must just be coming from the engine. I need to replace the rocker gasket again. I nipped it when I was putting it on again last time and there's a little bit of an oil leak again from the back, but some to address later. So that was just dripping down onto the coil, so the coil's fine. I've also cleaned up the manifold, cleaned all the paint off it and there's no visible cracks or anything on that. These two ports were very coked up, which I've cleaned out and I've sent like a little uh, telescopic like wiry brushy thing through them to clean. Right, let's start putting the car back together and see if anything that we we'll do here will address the high island issue. If not, then we'll take it from there. Forgive the sound of the petrol strimmers going off in the background there. Um, I've turned down the volume the best I can. I'm going to do some waffling voiceover to get, uh, drown it out. Putting a brand new metal gasket on there before I put the intake manifold back on and as you know tighten it back up with three half inch bolts want to replace all the gaskets here and everything to eliminate any sort of air leak putting on a brand new insulator spacer block a Weber one which has got the gaskets already on both sides and the accelerator bracket goes back on with a brand new gasket on top of that. Carburetor plopped on. And it's time to tighten it back up with two half inch nuts. I've already uh, connected the accelerator cable. By the way, I need to replace the accelerator cable with an appropriate one for this. I just modified the bracket a bit to put this on. Because now that I've changed it to the earlier intake doodle. I need to replace the accelerator cable for a one off an earlier HC. The one hasn't got the, that long adjuster thing on it, if you know what I mean. Time to put the fuel hose back on. And uh, this is just a temporary fuel hose that I'm putting on for now. It's very stretched, so I don't want to leave it on like this and go for running it. I have ordered up some new fuel hose. I'm also going to go ahead and fit the choke cable that I keep calling the clutch cable. And I've just tried that and realised I've adjusted it up too tight and not left enough slack on it. So I'm going to readjust that. These are items that will be getting replaced but I just want them to work for now. Or if I give it, give it another quick run out, I want to have like a working choke cable. So I've done a quick repair on that and the choke cable broke instantly. <laughs> <laughs> Still idling really high. Right, I'm going to try running a 12 volt feed to the carburetor to the idle shut off solenoid. I don't think it's got anything to do with it, like, because I don't think it'd be getting fuel at all if it was working or meant. I don't know. Let's give it a go on anyway. Let's steal the feed from somewhere and give it a 12 volt supply. See what happens. Today, I will be mostly eating Whisper Golds. Now, if you like a cup of tea and you like a little summon summon with a cup of tea and you're not on the Whisper Gold train, then you're missing out. Mm. Right, I've measured up a bit of cable. I'm just going to steal the feed for the oil pressure switch and uh, take it from there and 
<coughs> connected to the idle shut off sensor valve thingy bob and see if it makes a difference. Ignition's on and there's no fire yet. Let's kick her over. Are you kidding me? Why would that make a difference if it's meant to be an idle cut-off switch? Like it's meant to stop it from idling when you turn the ignition off, isn't it? <laughs> and why did they send me a carburetor for a Viva HC with a cut-off solenoid on? There we go, she's purring like a kitten, turn sounding lovely, we'll have to take off a rip in the next video, I'll have to get this permanently wired in, or did they do a blanking plug for this? I know a lot of people took them out and cut them off, I don't know if I want to do that, but definitely maybe a blanking plug, or just wire the thing in, maybe wire it permanently in, do you think it'll be okay to just share the feed for the oil switch, maybe get like a double connector for down there, and also, unless I can find an insulator block with the breather thing on it, since it wasn't that, that was the problem. You can buy catch bottles for them and stuff like that, can't you? I'm not too bothered about rerouting these if you don't have to. I'll just maybe buy catch bottles or something for them. For them two thingy bobs. I and a choke cable. We need to get a choke cable put on. That throttle response is instantly better, like you can tell even from backing it off the drive and putting it back on. I still need to replace that clutch cable. Wow, I need to cut the grass as well. Creeps up on you that leg, didn't it? And uh, I know what I'm going to do with the centre repair section on the exhaust. I need to get that sorted because it sounds like it's going to blow again. Ooh. Okay, let's go to town. That's about as far in the town as I like to go. Name that movie. I promise you we'll take her out for a run in the next video and see if we can get them rear wheels to spin on that Weber Cobb. I did not think it would be that idle control valve. I didn't think even think that would come into play. There was a few people who messaged and said it needed 12 volt feed and I was thinking she's idling so the thing's not working because it's meant to cut the idles off. Turns out it was that. Thank you all very much for your comments, questions through Instagram and Facebook and getting interactive and helping us like solve this problem. She's running now, she's purring like a kitten. Pretty soon we'll be going for the long run, we'll be going for the road journey in her. But we'll definitely get her out and test that Weber card in the next video. As always, thank you all very much for watching. Please like, share and subscribe, have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Behind your frozen eyes, skies are here and laughter. Make me feel just one more thing than I And even though that I 
spice the thing you're after. Realize you're something more than I. 